everyone. So today I wanted to talk about how you can recognize when your horse is showing affection. And before we get into the points, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel for more weekly horse videos. All right, so I have five clear ways you can tell when your horse is showing affection. And I'm also gonna talk about some other things that you can recognize that us horse people usually think, oh look, they love me. But in reality, it's kind of bad behavior. So we're gonna talk about those things too so y'all can recognize those and correct those things. So my first point for how a horse shows affection to a human is that they will come to you. So how many of you walk out to your horse's pasture, you open the gate, you start walking to your horse and your horse's ears perk up towards you? You can tell that they're watching you, then they lift their head and they're looking at you, and then maybe they'll take a few steps towards you at the end. That is great because it shows that the horse recognizes you and that they want to come to you. If your horse takes off the other direction, well, they may not want to come to you. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about why horses will come to you in the first place. We're, you know, we're saying that they like your presence. So one reason your horse may not come to you is because if they're used to just seeing you and you grab them and then you immediately go into working in a hard training session and then you just throw them back out, that's not really enjoyable for the horse. You know, you gotta throw some things in there for them to enjoy so that they learn that your presence is good. So let's say you grab your horse and you brush him and it's nice and then you go and ride, but you're doing fun things too to engage your horse. And then afterward, you you know, you know scratch all your horse's scratches, you give them some treats, you let them back out. You know, that's gonna be much more enjoyable for the horse compared to just being taken out anytime you wanna work them. And personally, I find, especially with Tucker, <laughs> he's like this too. If I'm going through a period where I just wanna train, 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 it gets to the point where sometimes we'll go out in the field and he'll be like, mm, get away from me, woman. I do not want to work today. So that's when I have to take a step back and be like, okay, I need to make this a fun and enjoyable experience for my horse too. And I find that when I do that, Ducker is way more willing to be around me and come to me and stuff like that. So if you're struggling with maybe your horse likes to run away from you in the field or, you know, you just don't feel like you have that connection with them, they're not acting like they're happy to see you, that's a great place to start is just making things fun for them anytime you take them out, anytime they're with you. You wanna make things engaging and fun and enjoyable for them. If you're always feeling stressed around your horse and frustrated, the horse is gonna feel that too and then they're gonna be stressed and frustrated. And then they're gonna just correlate you with stress and frustration. So anytime they see you, they're like, oh my gosh, today is not my day. You know, and so just being aware of your mental space when working with your horse can go a long way and it can be really helpful for your horse in terms of just feeling better in your presence. All right, my next point I've kind of covered a little bit, but another way a horse may show affection is by turning their head and their ears towards you. This can be when you go to get them in the pasture or it can be when you're working and training and doing some groundwork, they may do this. If you've ever watched a horse in the pasture with other horses, like I know Tucker had this cute little pony who was his girlfriend for the longest time, but he was always watching her. You know, that was his girlfriend. His eyes were always on her, his ears were always pricked towards her, you know, watching her every move. So when I take my horse out and I'm doing some groundwork or training or I'm in the round pen or anything like that, I want that same reaction. I want them to be watching me and listening and seeing what I'm gonna do next. You know, we all know when you bring your horse's food out and it's time to eat, that horse is focused on that grain. They're watching that grain, their ears are pricked towards the grain. So if your horse can have that same emotion towards you, that's great because it means they're focused on you, they're paying attention to you, and they're also looking to you as somewhat of a leader to see your every move and to see what you're gonna do. So even if I'm not asking my horse to do anything, I want that focus on me. So one great way you can do that is just by playing games with your horse, making it fun for them, but also making it so that they have to pay attention and see what you're doing. So that's why I always say groundwork, you know, I love groundwork, I'm always gonna recommend that. There's some great things you can do with groundwork that's just getting your horse to focus, but that is also fun for them to do. If you wanna have fun, just go set up an obstacle course and lead your horse through it, and just have them pay attention at every obstacle, and it'll be fun for them, and it'll also help them focus and pay attention to you. My next point on how a horse shows affection is that they're gonna follow you around. Like I was saying about Tucker's little pony girlfriend, 
Those two would follow each other around everywhere in the pasture. Wherever one went, the other would go. So it's the same thing with your horse. If your horse is willing to follow you around without a lead or anything, that means they think of you as their buddy. So once again, the way you're going to start to help your horse think in that way is simply by spending time with your horse and making the experience good for them and so they can learn that your presence is nice and they want to be in your presence. So I know with Tucker, you know, he can be a little standoffish, but then I feel good because if I leave him in an area to graze and there's no one else around and I walk out of view, he starts freaking out. And so then when I step back in view, he's like, oh, there she is. And he'll come over to me and stuff like that. And so just seeing what your horse does with your presence and then start just playing with them to see if they'll follow you around in the pasture or maybe in the round pen and you can just make a game out of it and, you know, start, stop, zigzag, go around obstacles and stuff like that. So my next point for how horses show affection is that they follow your instructions. So in a herd, if a horse respects the alpha horse, they will follow the horse's instructions. You know, that alpha is their protection, that alpha is their guide, in the wild that alpha would find them food and water, and so they have affection and they have respect for that horse. So technically, I want the same thing between me and my horse, and I want my horse to view me in that way. They know I'm gonna provide for them, they know they can trust me, and they can look to me to protect them. And when a horse thinks of you in this light, then they're gonna follow your instructions. If you think why a horse follows instructions, and you think of a horse's character, you know, they're prey animals, a horse learns to follow the alpha's instructions for their own good. You know, they're like, well, if I probably don't follow this horse's instructions, I'm probably gonna get eaten by a lion. And same thing, it's like they learn that, oh, well this is gonna be safer for me to do by following, you know, my rider's instructions rather than, you know, my usual response, which would be to freak out. But if I trust this person, then I'm gonna trust them to get me out of this situation alive. So since horses are herd animals, they are always vying for that dominant position. They're always like, I'm gonna be higher on the totem pole than this horse here. And if you watch your horse in the field, you'll always notice there's one horse always at the bottom of the totem pole, and they don't really like to be there, and they'll probably try and pick on the other ones, but the other horses just put it down. Yeah, I feel bad for that horse. Anyway, so if you have a horse that is testing you, they are testing you to see if you're the dominant one or if that horse is the dominant one. And so if you have a horse that follows your instructions, and they're not gonna test you and they're not gonna see what they can get away with, then that means they have that respect for you as the leader. You know, as I mentioned, every horse is gonna try and vie for that leader in that alpha position, but don't get me wrong, as herd animals, they also love to be led. You know, that's in their nature to look to a leader and have that leader to provide for them. So once again, if a horse will follow your instructions well, that means that they trust you as their leader and they have affection for you in that way. All right, my last point for how a horse may show affection towards you is that they're relaxed around you. And this one is a huge one and it should not go unnoticed. So like mentioned earlier, horses are prey animals, which is funny because we are technically predator animals to them. But if your horse is relaxed around you, that means that they have affection for you, they know you, and they trust you. So I can't tell you how many horses I've worked with where in the beginning they were really untrusted and unsure, and then, you know, a few weeks in they started to learn to trust me, and they started to relax more, and I could just tell them the, their demeanor and the way they carry themselves that they were starting to trust me more and not see me as a threat. So, like I said earlier, horses are prey animals. So that means they're constantly gonna be looking for danger. And so when they meet a new human that they're not familiar with, they're gonna do the exact same thing. And they're gonna be seeing, is this person a threat or can I trust them? And so that's why in the beginning, if you've ever worked with a newer horse and you notice that they're kind of on edge, or maybe your current horse is on edge with you, it's because they haven't figured you out yet. They haven't figured out whether you're friend or foe. And how you respond in this situation will determine that. So that's why it's important to remain calm and patient and create a good atmosphere for your horse and be gentle with them so that they learn that you are not gonna hurt them and that they can be relaxed around you. If a horse is relaxed around you, they've determined that you're safe to be around. So if you need to help your horse get to this place, one thing I recommend is just like brushing your horse and petting them. I find that if I pet my horse like up here above their eyes, they get really sleepy and they'll just relax. And just stuff like that, showing that your touch is good. Um, showing that you can be patient even kind of in a frustrating situation. And horses learn most by repetition and so it's important to do these things over and over again. And even just being in the presence of your horse, like whether they're grazing and you're just sitting on a log, 
even to them, that is them getting to know you, even if it doesn't seem like it, even if they're just grazing a few feet away from you. And so those are some ways that you can help your horse relax around you. Some ways to notice if your horse is relaxed around you is just to look at their posture. Do they seem uptight? Do their eyes seem wide and like untrusting and they're like, oh my gosh? Or are they relaxed? Are they chewing? Usually when a horse chews that shows that they're relaxed. These are all things to look at for your horse. Do they cock their back leg when you brush them in or are they just like, ah? Or are they kind of bouncing around in the cross ties or stuff like that? So those are things to be aware of to help you learn whether your horse is relaxed or not. Okay, so now I want to talk about some behavior that even I think is cute and I think it's adorable when my horse does, but it's not actually affection, and I know this is going to be controversial, um, but do you consider when a horse nuzzles you or rubs their head on you or bumps you with their head, is that affection? To me, no, that's not affection. And I'll tell you a story to explain why. I used to ride Tucker, and when we would be done riding, I'd take his bridle off, and then I'd start walking back to the or back to his field, and I'd stop him to pet him. And every time I did this, he would hit me with his nose a little bit and just go like this. And so I'd pet him and be like, "Oh, that's so cute. He loves me, you know." And then it got to the point where one day I let him down to the gate to his pasture and instead of opening the gate right away and letting him go I was just petting him and rubbing him <laughs> and he takes his head and he wallops me in the face and that's when I realized no that's not actually affection he's just being impatient and wanted to go back into his field so real quick if a horse respects you they're gonna respect your personal space so that means they're not gonna butt you with their head. So just be aware of this. I know it's a thing that a lot of people think is cute and adorable, which I do too, but it's also disrespectful and it's the horse rushing you or, you know, they're invading your personal space. And the thing is, if you let this build, like if your horse starts, like with Tucker, he would butt me with his nose and then one day he butt me with his head. And then I'm sure if I let it go on the next day, he would have hit me with his shoulder and then maybe he would have run me over a little later. And so it's just important to be aware of the reasoning behind your horse's actions and determining from there the best course of action. Okay, so so far in this video, we talked about how your horse shows affections. Now I wanna cover what are some things you can do to help your horse see you in that light. I've worked with a lot of people and I've heard often people will just say, well, I just don't think this horse likes me. I don't think a horse can just not like someone. I think that if you work at it, you can build that relationship and then they can see you in a more positive light. Okay, so what are some ways you can help your horse learn to love you? Well, number one is obviously spend time with them. With any relationship, the way you learn to love each other is by spending time together. When I met my husband, you know, we spent time together in the beginning and then we're like, oh, let's get married. And then we spend more time together now because we're married. So, same thing with the horse. If you want to help build that connection with your horse, the best way to do it is to spend time with them. Horses learn by repetition, so if they never see you, how are they supposed to know that that's how they're supposed to feel about you? So by, you know, having that consistent time where you go out to the barn, spend time with your horse, you can groom them. That's a great thing to do. Just leading them around or just sitting in the pasture with them while they eat or just playing with them in the ring. These are all great things you can do just to spend time with your horse. We all think, well, I should spend a lot of time with my horse when I first get it because it doesn't know me and it needs to learn to build that connection with me. But it's important that even after you've had that horse for a while, that you're still spending time with them. After a while, you may be like, oh, well, I don't have to go out to see them and I'll just go out when I want to ride. And then the horse is going to be like, well, they only come and see me when they want to work. You know, and so it's important that you still make things fun for them and enjoyable for them so that they can still believe that your presence is good. Um, I've been doing this with Tucker lately. And I'll just take him out and I've been giving him baths. I've been letting him eat some grass. I play with him in the field and I brush him and I fly spray him because he hates bugs. You know, imagine if the only time I ever saw my husband, he was asking me to do something and work. That would not be fun. And so it's the same thing with the horse. If the only thing you do when you see them is ask them to work, they're not going to really see you in the best of light. So you need to make sure you take the time to just be with them and have a good presence with them. So I kind of touched on this point earlier, but one way you can help your horse learn to love you 
is by always just checking your emotions when you're working with them. And remember, we want to maintain a calm environment for the horse. Horses pick up on our emotions incredibly well. And it's through every subconscious little movement we make. So if you're on your horse and you're getting frustrated, but you're not really aware of it, but you are, you may cue them to do something a lot harsher than you need to. Or if you're anxious and stressed, you may pinch with your knees and like tense up and they can feel that. So it's important to make sure that you're staying patient and calm and making sure that your body is also communicating that to them as well because that's how they're going to pick up on things like that. And so I always tell people and what I always do is if I feel myself starting to get stressed out or anxious, I just first of all remember to breathe deep because if you're stressed out, you're probably not really breathing a lot. So I breathe deep and I relax and I take a moment just to calm myself before I go on and I work with them more. And so also just understanding why your horse is doing something. So if a horse is doing something because they're scared, the worst thing you can do in that situation is get frustrated with them and act more harshly. You know, with that they need a patient hand who's going to show them that you don't need to be scared. You know, rather than someone who's going to be like, shape up. You know, so those are just things to be mindful of. If you're always creating a negative environment for your horse, they're going to associate you with that and when they see you in the field coming to get them, they're going to be like, no, not today. Okay, my last point for how you can help your horse learn to love you is to be a decisive leader. So as I just mentioned in my last point, being a decisive leader is always maintaining the same composure. You know, staying calm, staying patient with your horse, even if it is a frustrating situation. Also giving decisive cues. You know, you have to make up in your mind as the leader what's gonna happen next. You can't be second guessing yourself or be like, well, I don't know. You know, you need to figure out what's gonna happen and ask your horse to do it. Cause confusion can just lead to stress on both your part and the horse's part. Another thing about being a decisive leader is confidence. You have to have the confidence in what you're asking the horse to do and confidence in yourself and in the horse. And the horse can pick up on that and that can make them feel more confident. We have a video on confidence actually that we just did. And so you can go check it, that video out. It's about how to be more confident as a horseback rider. All right guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. And as always, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and go subscribe to our channel for more weekly horse videos. And I'll see you guys next week.